Yes, I brought my South African girlfriend to America, and this is how it went. So now the South African girl was like, who is that? And why was she grabbing on you like that? What's going on? Oh, we back at it with another episode of Passport Pookie's Travel. And if you read the title, then you know where we're going with this. Yes, I brought my South African girlfriend to America, and this is how it went. Stay tuned. All right, so I got to give y'all some context. Y'all know, just so you understand the story, and I'm going to try not to ramble off. I'm going to try not to stutter so much because you got to remember, bro, the way I talk, not everybody's going to be able to understand it. That's why I dropped the subtitles, or sorry, the captions, but I don't go through and edit the captions. So if the captions are wrong, you just got to improvise, right? Anyways, I end up, while in Thailand, meeting some white South African guys. So when I meet these guys, it was the situation was all weird from the beginning. I end up going on a tour to Fifi Island because as I told y'all, while I was in Thailand, I was actually doing touristy stuff because I, I went with two females. You see what I'm saying? I went with two black women and they wanted to do touristy stuff and we also party. So when we went to Fifi Island, we all booked through separate tours. One of my friends booked all her stuff in a package. So they set up her room, they set up her tours, they set up everything. My other friend, we booked it when we got there. She found a place that was cheaper, so she booked hers at a separate time, and I booked mine at a separate place also. So we ended up all going at separate times, so I ended up essentially by myself. I'm on the boat, we taking the speed boat to Fifi, and across from me is two twins that were huge as hell. Big ass Boa South Africans, or as they say, Boas. I know I'm saying it wrong for all the, my sayings that are gonna correct me in the comments below, but nonetheless, two huge ones that were twins, one built one that was about my size, and then two females. So the entirety of the ride, which was about, I think it was about 45 minutes. It was it was quite a distance, but it was on speedboat. So you, we bouncing across these waves, and the whole time these waves are bouncing, as I'm looking across from me, these white guys are just fucking staring at me, dude. Now granted, one thing I learned when I was in Thailand, it's not the it's not the Thai people that you're gonna have the problem with. It's the foreigners, especially the European ones. They hate it that you're there. They don't want you there. They don't want you messing with the Thai girls. They try to do everything they can to get you up out of there. They mean mug you. They try to start fights with you and stuff like that. Especially because it's it's easy for them to stay over there. You know, dipping and dodging the immigration laws, and some of them get retirement visas, but they just don't want us there. So these guys are staring at me, and I'm like, man. Like I always say, I'm about to have to fight these niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying in my head. But I'm, you know, I started calculating stuff. I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, which one? I'm gonna go for the little one first, obviously, because he's my size. Them big ones is going, them some big boys. So I'm like, you know, and you know, South Africa is big in rugby. So if you imagine a rugby player, two rugby players, and then like a football player, you know what I'm saying? So in my mind, I'm like, I'm going for him and I'm smacking them bitches too. Yeah, I'm hitting there where everybody gets it. Nobody's safe. So before we get to the actual island, one of the guys said, hey, brother, where you from? And, you know, South Africans got that UK accent, you know, but to them, they don't have a UK accent. But to us, it sounds very similar to the UK. They speak like actual English. Right. So the guy's like, hey, brother, where you from? And I'm like, I'm from California. Oh, really? What are you doing out here? And I'm like, man, you know, I'm on vacation just like y'all. And I'm, I'm being real quiet. Uh, not real quiet, but I'm being real cautious and real you know, I'm paying attention to what I say and how much I say because he's talking to me, but everybody else is just staring at me with this blank ass stare, bro. And I'm like, I thought they was Germans the whole time or Russians or something. And I'm like, man, these dudes are going to try to, they're going to try to jump me. They're going to try to kidnap me. They, they want to try to do something to me, bro. Cause he was the only one that spoke the entirety of the time that I was dealing with these people. Right. Cause after the boat, after the boat ended up parking, we ended up getting off together and went to drink a little, went to drink together a little bit. You know, I was cautious cause I'm like, still like, man, they might be trying to get me drunk so they can beat me up or whatever. But anyways, I'm talking to this guy. He was like, no man. He was like, man, you ever been to South Africa? And I'm like, nah. So he was like, brother, you gotta come to South Africa. They would love you, man. You, you got all these tattoos, you're buff. You're a good looking guy, man. They would love you there. And I'm like, man, South Africa. Cause I'm, I'm still thinking he's lying. Cause I'm, I never knew there was white people in Africa. Cause as I mentioned in all my other stories, that was like the thing they would say to us. And all my Americans can vouch for that. Go back to Africa, go back to Africa. As if I've ever been to Africa in the first place, but go back to Africa if you don't like America, go back to Africa. You know what I'm saying? So these white guys 
which have this UK accent telling me they live in South Africa. So I'm like, oh yeah, bro, yeah, I'll check it out, I'll check it out. Yeah, for sure, they'll like me over there, what they look like. Oh man, we got, you know, all types of girls. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. So I'm gonna skip past all the, you know, stuff we did at the beach and whatever. I get back to the States and I'm bored at the house one day and I get on Tinder. I said, man, hmm, let me get on Tinder and just see what's on here. I ended up going and put, setting my Tinder to South Africa. And so as I'm scrolling, and I'm seeing like all these mixed chicks on there. And I'm like, how is this Africa? I had to check. I had to check the location to make sure it was actually in Africa. Cause I'm like, bruh, what, what, what is going on? So I'm just keep scrolling. I'm seeing all these mixed chicks and stuff. And I'm like, this is Africa. And so I messaged a couple and I get some responses. Like, hey, where you from? Where you from? No, I'm from here, I'm from there. Oh, okay. Well, when you get to South Africa, hit me up. I'm like, bro, you really African? Like what? Are you an Indian person? Like, are your parents mixed or what? Like, where did you come from? No, I'm colored. I'm colored. Like, colored? What you mean by that? Like, what do you mean by that? You know, you, that's, you know I'm supposed to say that? What you talking about? You colored? No, we're, 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 we're our own race in South Africa. We're called colored. So now, I'm not ignorant no more. I get on Google and I start researching this. I'm like, colored? I said colored South Africans and I spelled it the way we spell it. You know, over on this side, they spell it with a U. C-O-L-O-U-R-E-D. And I'm like, what? They got a whole nother race out there called color? Man, I'm just baffled this whole time. So one specific chick that I end up meeting was a chick that I was like, okay, man, she she nice looking. And she in all her pictures, she had straight hair. So she looked more Indian than she did mixed race. So I was like, that's interesting. So let me hit her up and see what she on. So I hit her up and we talked. Now, out of all the chicks that I was talking to, she was one of the ones that kept contact with me the most. Like, you know... Most people don't want to talk to somebody who's not there. So she she kept in contact. The communication was good. You know, there, it didn't feel like we was on two opposite sides of the world. It was FaceTime and we would sit up on the phone. She would stay up and talk to me, you know, super late in the morning. I'd be like, hey, wake me up for work. She would call me and make sure I got up for work. And even if I didn't wake up, bro, she would literally call me until I got up. It was it was crazy. I was like, bro, this chick is really vibing with me. And around this same time I met her, I was also talking to this German chick. So, you know, I'm, I'm juggling between the two besides also the chicks that I'm dealing with in the States, you know, and chicks that I still talk to from Japan. And, you know, I'm just I'm just seeing I'm just seeing what what's next because I got I'm, I'm on leave right now. I got time to plan a vacation. So I'm like, man, where am I about to go? Am I going to South Africa? Or am I going to go to, you know, Dominican Republic? Or am I going to go to, you know, one of these Spanish countries that's closer? I'm, I'm chopping it up with this chick. I'm chopping it up. And I'm like, hey, can you come out to see me? I'll pay for your flight. You know, Africa is on the other side of the world. And in order to get to Africa with my job, I had to get all these vaccines. They, I had to I had to do so much stuff. I had to take a course to even go to Africa because my job didn't want me to go over there and, you know, become, you know, get kidnapped and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? It's like that. It kind of scared me when I started doing that. So I kind of fell back a little bit. I was like, hey, can you come to me? And she was like, I can't at the moment. I'm studying and, and we're doing exams right now. Because, you know, when it's wintertime in the States, it's summertime in South Africa. So she couldn't make it. So at the time, like I said, you know, I was talking to her and the German girl and, you know, some chicks I met in Thailand and some chicks from that I had from Japan. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a young dude. I'm single. This, that, and the third. Okay, so you know how it go, man. I had to go with the next best option. And the German girl, they didn't look exactly the same, but the German girl was also mixed. She was Nigerian. Nigerian and black or sorry Nigerian and German light skin green eyes you know her her body was a bit different you know the South African girl was more top heavy as opposed to the German girl who she was half Nigerian so she had them yams so I ended up hitting up the German girl I was like hey man you know how you feel about coming out to see me and she flew out you know the, as opposed to the South African girl who wasn't able to come because she was studying so the German girl flew out Man, we spent some time together, which was a cool ass, it was a cool ass little vibe or whatnot. She know she went back to Germany and I still kept in touch with her as while I was talking to the South African girl. So the second time I tell the South African girl to come through, I'm like, hey, if you can't come through, I can't continue to wait on. Like it was cool having the long distance conversation, us talking. Like the combo was good. It was it was dope. It was just I, I had to touch on something, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I I got I had stuff going on. I just needed somebody there with me in person. You know what I'm saying? So I tell the South African girl this. I'm like, hey, 
look, I look, you got to make a decision. Like, what you going to do? So she ended up telling her parents and she ended up coming out. So I know it's not typical for a chick to just get flown out like that. The German chick, she was like a fashion designer, like a big time fashion designer. So she, her dad thought it was a, it would be a great opportunity for her. And the colored chick, I had to actually talk to her dad over the phone. Like, you know, I was in, you know, I was in my, my work uniform and stuff like that. So when he seen me, he was like, okay, I mean, I talked to him, he told him a prom made a promise I'll take care of his daughter and stuff like that. So she ends up flying out to see me while in California. But what I didn't tell her was I ended up meeting this Mexican woman that I ended up dating. I was like staying at her crib. She was staying at mine. Like it was kind of a whole, you know, a whole thing, which ends up comes up to, you know, bite me in the ass later. So I made a promise, yeah, you know I mean, to the South African chick, like, or and myself, I was like, when you know, when she come around, I'ma just be, you know, with her because the Mexican chick I was dating had a daughter and her be her her baby daddy was, you know, he was still going through that state, like, oh my baby mama, baby mama. And I'm like, you know, I'll get there with him, but at the same time, like, it's too many stories of dudes getting shot over some, you know, somebody else's baby mama. You see what I'm saying? She was cool, but like you know what I'm saying she was already like spiritually attached to somebody. And I was like, man, you know, the South African chick, she young, she fresh, she ain't got no kids, you know, she's still able to be molded into what I need her to be as opposed to this, you know, cause the Mexican girl was my age. Yeah. You know I mean, I think even maybe a year old, no, she was about the same. She, she was a year older, a year younger, but she was we were really close in age. And the South African girl was a couple years younger. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, if, I, if she come through, I'm, I gotta, you know, give her the, you know, the time of day. Cause even at one time in our little relationship, we ended up both talking to somebody else because she couldn't come. I actually asked her to come out twice. The first time it was school, the second time her pops was just like, no, man, I can't let you go over there to meet some strange dude in America. So at this time, I ended up talking to a Mexican girl from back home. So but as you can see, I I did never, I never neglected black women. I dated black women my whole life. It was just in the areas I was living in, I was dating what was around. So when I was in California, I was living around Mexicans, you know, when I was here, I was living, you see what I'm saying? When she arrives in America, I cut the Mexican chick off. But the way I did it was I had a, I had a pair of the Mexican chick keys. So the day I went and picked up the South African girl from the airport, I was dropping off the Mexican chick keys because, you know, I was opening one door, closing the next. So when I go take the Mexican girl the damn keys, she grabs my butt. I got the South African girl in the passenger seat. I just picked her up from the airport. But you got to remember, I was I was at work. So I had to, when I was doing all this, I was doing this in like in between my work schedule. So I'm dropping off this and doing that because, you know, it was just too much to be trying to juggle. And I'm trying to see what's going on with this South African chick. She just flew all the way over here to see me. Bye, bye, bye. But she saw the whole thing. I didn't even think it was going to go down. Like I thought I was going to give Shorty her keys and then we was going to go our separate ways. The South African girl is sitting in the passenger seat. Sorry, and I part. I tried to park far enough to where they couldn't see each other, but it was it's California. It's hot. I'm in a full uniform with boots on and stuff. Man, you know what I mean? I'm like, bruh. You know, so I parked far enough to where I thought they couldn't see each other, but obviously it didn't work out. So now the South African girl was like, who is that? And why was she grabbing on you like that? And, you know, obviously the Mexican chick saw her, so that's why she did it. Okay, so I took her home from there and on the car ride home, it was so awkward, bro. She, You could tell she had a little attitude. And another thing is, when she got there, she looked so much more younger than she did in her pictures, bro. So that was kind of scary, too. Cause I was like, damn, she looked really young in person, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm I'm a bigger dude and she she was tiny she's not tiny she she's almost about my height but you know she at the time she looked real you know she looked real fresh like you know what I mean and they dress different not no they don't she dressed different like she she had her own she had her own little style about her you know she she obviously got money she was able to come to the states to come see me and you know her people do got money but she just had her own little style which wasn't typical how we dress in the state so i had to take her to uh damn what was that place I, was it play it wasn't play those closets it was something like tj maxx or something i went and took her got a bunch of little cheap dresses and stuff like that went and got her some sneakers because she came over there looking like a light-skinned african for real and I, no, no disrespect to all my africans watching this but she had she had the jesus sandals on or no no matter of fact she had on some long ass adidas i'm talking about them bitches were long <laughs> she had on the, the, the banana boats <laughs> 
And then they was tied super tight. They was tied. Uh, bro, we get to the crib after we go shopping and stuff like that, you know. And then the first day, I know um, after that, and then she just got off a twenty something hour, a twenty something hour flight. And like I told y'all, bro, I'm I, all everybody knew me for dating baddies, so she she was naturally attractive, but she she had a lot of work that needed to be done. Like I took her after we went shopping, I took her to the Indians. We got a nail or we got her eyebrows threaded. Uh, we went to the shop next door, got to the Koreans, got our nails and stuff done. Went and got her some nice little sundresses. You know what I'm saying? Cause she, bro, she was looking crazy, dog. And I was like, okay, now she was, now she was on point. She was looking mad presentable. I took her home so she could wash up, man. You know, clean herself up, get something to eat up in her, and you know, pipe it around. Cause what else? You know what I'm saying? We just been talking on the phone. Man, man this chick was doing the long distance thing for like a year and some change, dog. It was a long time. You know what I mean? All, you know, phone sex and nudes and shit like that. The, the thing is in person, real deal now. You know what I'm saying? And even after all those years, we had the whole conversation. Oh, I ain't, I ain't been messing with nobody. But I still don't believe it to this day whether she, that she wasn't messing with nobody. Because, like, come on, let's be for real. That was a long time we was on the phone. Besides the fact when we had our little split up and stopped talking for a little couple of days or whatever. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's be for real. College student, living on campus. We know how it goes. But I'm doing my thing, so I'm not worried about that. All right, so here's where things start to get really, really crazy and interesting. So at this time in my life, bro, I was mad insecure, bro. Like, I just didn't like, I felt like, you know, respect is respect all the way around. There ain't no confusion or confusing that. You know what I mean? And I just felt like when she came, the cultural differences were a little bit off. So I was taken into all the, the baddest restaurants in, you know, L.A., bro. We, you know, we, we did stuff that I know she didn't have on this side. Also, we did like the Sugar Factory um rooftop bar beach bar you know we hit up all the beaches and at this time my homie had came out from back home so we all just out living the living the la lifestyle bro uh private parties events clubbing just living it up man and you know how you get drunk and you start noticing stuff i felt like she was like staring at dudes and i and i mean even if she was whether she was or she wasn't i guess i couldn't get mad because she in a new country and stuff like that but you know i felt like she you know i felt like she was getting a little bit icy and stuff because you know women are, say they don't know or they wasn't doing it the whole time really be doing it we know how that go so i'm like man damn, i mean at least you're gonna look man you know keep it on the low ski because i mean we both getting attention like you feel me like I, I how can I trip on it? But I just felt like, you know, women make eye contact to let you know they want you. Dudes might stare at you just because we interested, but y'all make it known. Y'all, you know, women will hit you with them eyes and be like, yeah, I want you to know that I'm interested in you type vibe. So we at the rooftop bar, bro, and I swear her and this dude is just like making too much eye contact. That's what I felt like. I'm drinking, she drinking, my boy drinking, and I see the dude keep looking back at our table and stuff, and I'm like, bro, what's, I'm like, bro, what's going on? I'm like, damn, bro, you y'all, y'all, I was like, you want to go over there and kiss? So I look at her, you know, I say, you want to go over there and kiss this nigga? And she was like, what are you talking about? <clears throat> I said, man, you don't think I see you and this dude keep looking? Because he, I'm sitting to where I can see him. So she's sitting facing him. I'm sitting with my back towards the road, but I can see left, right, and he's on my right side, and then my homeboy sitting across from me. So I could see all this, you know, I could see it looked like they looking back and forth at each other and stuff like that. And I just felt mad disrespected, you know, whether it was really happening, we'll never know. But in my mind, you know, I trust my gut and my gut never lies. Right. So that was the first thing. The second thing we walking down the script and I felt like she did it again. Now, maybe I could have just been paranoid. I, I have been known to be a little bit paranoid. I, I am a pookie, right? But it just got a bit much, man. And I'm just like, man, is this chick just staring at people or is it or is it just me? So we walking down the script and I, I swear this dude, like, you could tell when a chick make eye contact, which when you turn around and look at her, that lets you that, that lets you know to confirm it. So I felt like she was making eye contact with the guy and he was making eye contact with her. So when he walked by, he turned back to look. And then I turned around, I looked at him. Then he kept on pushing. I was like, damn, bro. So she grabbed my arm and I pull away from her. And she was like, Pookie, what? why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? You tripping, bro. I wasn't even looking at the guy. Bah, 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 bah. And so I'm just trying to walk away, bro. I'm just trying to get away. We on, the, we on uh, I think we was on Hollywood, you know, uh, the stars where all the stars and stuff is. 
you know, we was walking down there and I was just trying to get away from her, you know, because I, I just was, I was pissed off at this point. I had been drinking and stuff. So we walking down the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame, Star of Fame, whatever. We walking down there and she's steady grabbing on me. And then we get, we going back to the car, right? And she's steady grabbing on me. She's steady trying to pull me. She been drinking. I've been drinking. Everybody a bit tipsy. And I'm just trying to get back to the whoop so I can go home, bro. Man, this chick ends up like, I can't remember if she jumped on my back or if she was trying to jump on my back, but she did something and I just like, huh. Now, I, you know, I wasn't trying to hurt her or hit her or nothing like that, but I was, she was jumping on me in the middle of the street in LA where them cops is ready to Rodney King somebody. You feel me? If you ever been to, if you ever been to California, you know, them, they be ready to, they be ready to get, get on one with you. So I pushed on me because I was like, I wasn't trying to cause no scene and she's steady yanking on me, dog. She's steady yanking on me and, and arguing and screaming in front of all these people. So when I pushed, I it wasn't even a hard push, but you gotta remember I'm a I'm a bigger dude, or not a bigger dude, but I'm bigger, way bigger than her. And she you knows she just this little tiny chick, and then she falls down. So my homeboy said, man, Pookie, what the fuck, man? He act like I punched her and knocked her out or some shit. I mean, bro, it's always why are we always a problem. The whole time, the whole entire time, I'm just, I'm trying to walk away from the situation. She chasing me and jumping on me and pulling and yanking at me, screaming all in my face, trying to run around me and get in my face and push me and stuff. So she falls down. Mind you, she drunk and all this other stuff is going on. My dog come at me. Now this, I don't, I don't want to get on here and talk too much about my personal business, but this is like the dude I grew up with. I, me and this dude, we did some bad things together. Like bad, like if he wanted to, he could he could have me put away. You see what I'm saying? He he knows some stuff that I did that some bad things, man. You see what I'm saying? This is my boy, and he like, man, what the fuck, man? You don't put your hands on no female. I said, nigga, I said, nigga, you ain't say shit. She grab like I don't want y'all to think I'm out here hitting females. I didn't, bro. I, I'm not that nigga, bro. But I did push her the fuck off me, bro, because I. I ain't want to get beat up by the police. That's what I'm worried about. It's police out there because it's a script and it's 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 a party night. So you're like, man, I don't give a fuck about all that. You, no, what what you say? You're like, man, no, nah, man, fuck all that. Man, you don't put your hands on no female, regardless of what it is. And this nigga pushed me. Now, it was three of us growing up. It was me, him, and my homeboy Tool. That was his last name. We, I ain't gonna go into detail, but that was his last name. So we called him by that. I was the fighter. Tool was the shooter. Boo was the damn. I said my boy name. Boo was the driver. Okay. Tool was the shooter. Pookie was the fighter. Boo was the driver. <laughs> he, you know, what I'm he he. That wasn't his role. That wasn't his role. You see what I'm saying? Man, this man put his damn hands on me. I said, man, what the fuck? Did. From there, it just it, it we we say that often. This mother like juvenile say, man. You see what I'm saying? Like what it was, you know. Boo, pops used to beat on his moms. You see what I'm saying? So I'm a I'm a bleep his name out just for the simple fact because that's some shit I sh I probably shouldn't even say it on camera. But anyways, I'm a bleep his name out. But my homeboy pops used to beat on his mom, so he had like PTSD towards that thing. Anyway, that's still my brother, man. We we squashed it. I ain't gonna go in here and talk about our battles in front of everybody, but yeah, man. And for y'all who always, man, African queens and this, that, and the third, bro. The more I live here, the more I realize, bro. If you want a queen from any country, it's gonna be this way or they're gonna be that way. It's no in between, bro. It's you're gonna get one or two. She's either gonna be submissive or she's gonna be a companion. You ain't gonna have both. If you have a companion, she's gonna feel like y'all 50 50, y'all equal. So she's gonna admit to you because that's just how it goes. She feels equal. She's a companion, right? If you have a submissive woman, y'all not gonna have anything in common because her whole goal is to please you. I've had both ends of the spectrum while dating in Africa. I had the submissive woman who only wanted to please me. And then I had, you know, the woman that wanted to be a companion. You know what I'm saying? So you, you only gonna get one or the other. That's the point of the story, man. You know, our African women really, you know, docile, submissive, 
I just want to please you. Yes, you can find some, but you have to find them. They're not going to come to you because they're submissive, right? They're not going to come to you. You have to go out and find them. Stop letting these YouTubers trick you out of your streets. If you enjoyed this one, I'm telling y'all too much about my damn personal life. So y'all better hit a thumbs up. I'll give you some time. That's enough time. Subscribe to the channel. Join the gang gang if you haven't. And always remember, it get cold in these streets. Bundle up.